Welcome back. I am so excited about today's video because I've literally always wanted to do this, but I've always been too afraid. <laughs> I've recorded workouts for Instagram and for TikTok for the training page. I've recorded so many videos uh, to send out to clients, but I've never actually made one for YouTube and I've literally wanted to for so long. And now I'm finally doing it. I was kind of terrified to bring my tripod to the gym, so I didn't do that. I used the ground and my gym bag and Frank, but we got it done. I'm going to walk you through an entire glute focused leg day. I just made this routine not too long ago and it has literally murdered me. It is so good and I'm so excited about it. Your glutes, your quads, and your hamstrings quaking baby quaking it hurts so bad i get literally so sore every time i do this workout so let's get to it it's a good one i started this leg day with back squats i chose to do them on the smith machine because it helps me do a little bit more weight um something glorious happened today i wasn't expecting it to at all i start with 25 pounds on each side we're practicing. We gotta get there somehow, some way. Sorry it's not all the weight in the gym. Mind your business. business. But what I like to do is implement progressive overload. I start with a 25, and then on my second set, I add a 10 to each side. So now we're doing 35 pounds. And this, she gets a little tricky. It's a little tricky here. My quads kind of wanna pop out of my skin when this happens, but we just keep pushing. That's what you gotta do. Then I move into plates. I haven't been able to do plates on a back squat since college. The quarantine, COVID just kind of like fucked with all my games, I guess. And so I've been trying to work back up to doing this heavy weight. Like I said, it's a practice. We're working it back up. Mind your business. Mind your business. But that's this is what we're lifting. Normally, I can only get through like, mmm, five, six squats with the plates on each side. But today, today, my glutes and quads said, sister, we're gonna carry you, we got you. I did all 10 of my reps with time under tension with the plates. Pretty great, don't worry about it. One way that I really like to make sure that I am adding more weight and I'm not selling myself short is by keeping a bench or a box close by. So I start with the weight that I know I can do. I work my way up until it's a weight that I know is a little more challenging for me. I set myself up and then I pump out as many as I can. If I can get to three, it's three. If I can get to eight, it's eight, great. Do as many as you can until your legs cannot handle it anymore, and then you pull the bench in. Now you're using the box to hold your weight so you can kind of get a grip, and then with all the power on your legs, you push yourself back up. Totally think about pushing yourself back up using only your legs. There's no momentum, there's no rocking off your butt, none of that. You are literally only using your leg muscles to lift your body and that weight back up. Some squat techniques to be mindful of. Think about hinging at your hips. You want to cut and squat. You don't want to just bend over with your chest. You want to just cut at your hips only and squat all the way back down. Another technique, like I said, was keeping your chest up. It can go forward a little bit. I mean, it's just kind of the mechanics of doing a squat, but you want to not be using your back at all to be lifting the weight back up that's really gonna help you feel the stretch in your glutes. As you go down, you're stretching that glute muscle out and that's gonna happen by hinging at your hips and by keeping your chest forward. One of the most important things that has absolutely changed my lifting game, like it's absolutely gotten me more results than anything else that I have ever done is time under tension. Time under tension. One more time for the people in the back. 
Time under tension. Time under tension refers to the amount of time a muscle is held under tension or strain during your entire set. So during these workouts, you lengthen each phase of the movement to make your sets longer. I personally do two seconds down, hold it two seconds at the bottom, and then two seconds back up. The idea is that it forces your muscles to work harder and optimizes muscular strength, endurance, and growth. There are so many different variations of this that you can do. You just have to make sure that you are at least holding at the bottom um, for a moment. At, and this can be used for literally any movement, any movement, arm day, leg day, chest day, back day. It's gonna help create more of those muscle tears that's gonna pump blood into the muscle and then help that muscle grow. Next, we are moving into lunges. I'm staying on the Smith machine for these. Again, they can be used in a variety of ways. And you know what? Every single one of these workouts, there's a modification for. You can do these with barbells. You can do these with dumbbells. There, are, You can do them with body weight. There are so many different modifications. So don't push yourself to do things past a limit that you don't feel comfortable with or that your body doesn't allow for. Make sure that you are progressing into um, lifts that best benefit you because you're gonna get there eventually. It just takes practice. When I start my lunges, I lean back into the bar a little bit. Then I make sure when I bring my leg back that I'm only using that back leg to balance on. 99% of the work being done is on that front leg. Think about angling your chest down a little bit. That's gonna help you get that stretch throughout your glute so that you're not just targeting your quads in this movement, you're gonna be targeting your glute muscle as well. And that again is done by keeping a little bit of a slant forward. If you feel like you're not getting a deep enough stretch, you can always put a plate underneath your front foot and that's gonna help get you more depth throughout the movement. You need to make sure you're making adjustments that best fit your body. So if you have to move a different way or put a plate underneath your foot, there's not one set in stone way to do movements. You just have to make sure that your form has good integrity. But other than that, as long as you're not gonna hurt yourself, shift around, feel where your muscle feels the movement the most. I think that's another thing that really made a difference in my fitness journey is I felt like I had to like stick so tightly to like watching what the people in the videos I was watching was doing or what like the pictures were doing and um, I didn't just feel out the movement and try to see where I felt the muscle working the most. So make sure you kind of adjust and move around without compromising your form and see where you feel the most stress and the most tension and the most contraction in your muscle. Next, we are moving into RDL. I did these assisted single leg. However, there are literally 3,000 million trillion gazillion ways to do RDLs. Not literally, but there is. When I originally made this workout, I started doing them, um, again, still on the Smith machine or with a barbell. Um, so doing compound barbell RDLs. I love doing them like this. That is like, one of my favorite ways to do it. I just chose to do it like this, just to isolate each hamstring um, because I feel like throughout my entire workout split, I wasn't putting enough emphasis on my hamstrings. I am such a psycho about the form for RDLs and for hip thrusts. I could literally dive into that so far. It's not even funny. I'm such a, such a hard ass about it. Hinging at your hips. Hinge at your hips with RDLs. You are not, I repeat, you are not just dropping your chest. I see so many of my clients just, just drop their chest down because it makes sense. That's what the movement looks like. It looks like you're just lowering the top half of your body in order to feel the stretch in the bottom half of your body, but that is not what's happening. You have to hinge at your hips in order to feel a stretch in that muscle and bring that contraction throughout your entire hamstring. This is really gonna target your tie-in, your glute and hamstring tie-in, and that is gonna create a cute little divot underneath your butt. It's gonna help give you that perky booty look that everybody looks for. Next, 
Next, we are moving into glute focused Bulgarian split squats. I had to like drop the shit out of my weight from RDLs to split squat. They're a cute little, they're a nice little, they humble you. They humble you. You're walking around with like the big dogs holding that big ass weight. You like go walk over to the dumbbell rack and you're like, yeah, this is what I'm lifting. And then you gotta like dee -dee 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 over to the one side and grab the 20s and just be like, this is all I got. Don't let anybody make you feel like that weight isn't good enough. It is a practice. Bulgarian split squats are typically a quad dominant movement. That means that you have to modify it in order to have it be glute focused. This is gonna be a quad dominant Bulgarian split squat. I'm just going straight down, keeping that back leg at 90 degrees and I'm using my quad to push me back up. To do this glute focused, you want to drop your chest forward and think about pushing yourself backwards. You're propelling yourself back towards your heel to get that full stretch again in your glute muscle. You're not keeping yourself at 90 degrees. Think about driving your butt back towards your heel. You don't wanna sit and squat on your heel, but you get the most out of glute movements when you feel that full curvature stretch compared to just up and down. Personally, I have done these on a bench. I've done these on the Smith machine, um, but I feel the most stretch when it comes to glute focused Bulgarian split squats on just a very low platform. So I just have one step with the little uh, box squares underneath and having it be that low really helps me get a nice depth so I can feel that entire stretch just like ignite my fucking glutes. I start my workout with my big four, like my big four compound or single leg movements. I'm using weight, I'm using progressive overload. Then after I get those out of the way, I move into more isolating movements, pumping movements. So for this leg day, I brought along my trusty ankle straps. I literally don't know how I went my entire fitness journey until maybe like two months ago without ankle straps, especially especially when I started lifting. Like if I had ankle straps when I first started working out, I would be so much farther. I'd be so much farther than I am right now. If you are just starting your fitness journey, buy ankle straps. I personally have Susie B ankle straps, but you can go on Amazon and just get cheap ones, just something that you can hook around your ankle and then hook to the cable machine. Girl. Game changer. For my isolating glute pumping movement on this leg day, I'm doing a tri-set. So I'm doing three movements back to back to back. And it hurts. You like ramp that weight up because you're like, my legs, those girls just lifted. Those girls just lifted 135 pounds. They can do three on kickbacks they can't they can't handle it it's it, it's so bad so take it easy on yourself again humble yourself drop that weight and see where you can go you can always move up we always want to use progressive overload so start at a low weight and work your way up you can also change the weight throughout your tricep movements you do not have to keep the same weight throughout all three i used to like think that you had to, or just like be so hard headed and stubborn that I just like would be like, no, I, I can do the same weight for all three. But you're working different parts of the muscle throughout each movement. So it's completely unrealistic to expect yourself to do the same amount of weight for every single movement. So for this tricep, I start with cable kickbacks. My chest is about parallel with the floor and I'm thinking about driving my heel up towards the ceiling. You are not using momentum here. You are only using your glute to pick up the weight. 
Make sure that you are not just dropping your leg back down either, that you are controlling the weight up and controlling the weight back down. That applies to all three of these movements. Then right away, I'm moving into forward kicks. You wanna make sure that you are just moving at your hip. You are not throwing your body weight forward to pick your leg up. And then I like to hold on to something. If you've got the balance of a god, don't hold on to anything. If you don't have to, by all means, do you boo-boo. But I have to. <laughs> so um, I hold on to the cable machine. I've also brought over um, the seated bench and I just put my hand on that. I just don't like to take more equipment than I need to because I feel like I'm a waste of space when I do so. But do whatever works for you. I personally like to hold on to something as well so that I can solely focus on using my glute muscle to lift my leg and the weight up compared to having to focus on keeping myself steady. It really helps with the mind to muscle connection. Lastly, I'm moving into side kicks. This is gonna work your gluteus medius. So for those of you that are looking for ways to kind of round out your booty or for, uh, to get rid of those hip dips, gluteus medius work is gonna be really good for you. I like to keep the cable in front of me. Um, I do struggle with this movement and I find it easier to have the cable in front of me compared to behind me. I feel like it helps me have more control. Um, but I do also like to switch it up day to day and put the cable behind me just to make sure that I'm getting a well-rounded development of that muscle and I'm not weakening one and strengthening the other one. I also like to make sure that my feet come back together compared to being separated. My gluteus medius is so weak, if you can't tell by my like major hip dips. <laughs> But I personally kind of like my hip dips. The anatomy of your glutes is to look like a butterfly. So to me, it just makes me feel stronger by having them look like that compared to the unrealistic Kardashian butt look that I wanted for like a way too long of amount of time. But it's all about being comfortable in your own skin and feeling good with your body. I hope you guys enjoyed this glute day. I hope you enjoy it even more once you actually use it and your glutes are absolutely fried and you basically have to throw yourself onto the toilet to sit down because you're so sore. If you're looking for more workouts, head over onto my Instagram or my TikTok at ST Training. There I post way too many <laughs> workouts. Other than that, I do offer one-on-one -on -one personal training tailored specifically to you and your body type. Everybody's body is different and it's a little hard to get the goals that you want to accomplish watching other people do what works for them compared to having somebody like myself create a plan that works specifically for you and your body and your needs and your goals. So send me a message, shoot me an email. I would love to work with you and get you closer to where you want to be. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means the absolute world to me. Anything you want to achieve, you absolutely can. You just have to put your mind to it and start. Bye guys, I'll see you in the next one.